Toba Mori. Part One. A Great Discovery. Lady Blemley knew that her house party was going to be difficult to organise, because it would continue for several days, and the guests would have to sleep in her large house. She always tried to invite guests who were talented and entertaining. Some people were invited because they were good at playing cards, others because they were good at acting, and others because they were good at playing the piano. After all, it was difficult to entertain guests for three or four days. To this particular house party, Lady Blemley invited Cornelius Appin. People said that he was clever, and in fact, Cornelius. Seemed like the name of a clever man, but when he was at the party, Lady Blemley could not understand why people thought he was clever. He said very little. One afternoon it was raining, and all the guests were in the living room. Cornelius Appin said, "I have made the most important scientific discovery in the history of the world." I have worked on this particular problem for many years. What is this fantastic discovery? Asked Sir Wilfrid, another one of Lady Blemley's guests. I have taught animals how to speak our language. Explained Cornelius. Do you have an example of your work here? Asked Sir Wilfrid, who obviously did not believe Cornelius. Yes, I do. Lady Blemley's cat. Toba Mori, Toba Mori is my best student," answered Cornelius. "How can we possibly believe," continued Sir Wilfrid, "that you have discovered how to teach animals to talk?" "Well," explained Cornelius, "I have worked on this problem for many years. I have experimented with thousands and thousands of animals. Seven months ago, I began to work with cats." Cats are the perfect animals for my work. They live with us, but they are still like wild animals. And there are cats who are more intelligent than other cats. Toba Mori is one of these intelligent cats. In fact, he is a super cat. He is the first animal that I have taught to speak perfectly. All the guests looked at Cornelius. Nobody said a word. They thought he was crazy, or a liar. Finally, after a minute or two, Miss Resker said, "I understand you have taught Toba Mori to say and understand very simple sentences like 'go' or 'come.' That's very interesting." No, no," said Cornelius patiently. Little children learn short sentences first, but Toba Mori is a very intelligent animal. I taught him to speak English perfectly and completely. His English is as good as your English. Now everybody was sure that Cornelius was a liar. I think we should see the cat, and then we can judge for ourselves," suggested Lady Blemley. Sir Wilfrid left the room and went to look for the cat. Everyone began to think that Cornelius was a good ventriloquist. They waited for this interesting show of ventriloquism to begin. A minute later, Sir Wilfrid came back in the room. His face was white. He was obviously very excited. "It's true! It's true!" he shouted. The other guests could see that Sir Wilfrid was telling the truth, and they asked him what had happened. Well, I found Toba Mori sleeping on a chair in the smoking room. I told him to come to the living room immediately. He opened his eyes slowly and looked at me. Then he said, "I'll come when I want to. Now go away." I almost fainted. Part Two: Some Terrible Discoveries. Now everybody believed Cornelius. They began to ask him lots of questions. Cornelius smiled. 
He was very happy with his first success. At that moment, when everybody was asking Cornelius questions, Tobermory walked into the room. None of the guests said a word. They felt embarrassed in front of a talking cat. Finally, the hostess, Lady Blemley, said nervously, "Would you like some milk, Tobermory?" "Yes, I'm a little thirsty," said the cat indifferently. Everyone in the room was shocked, and Lady Blemley's hand shook as she poured Tobermory some milk. I'm sorry, but I've spilt most of the milk on the carpet," apologized Lady Blemley. "I don't care," responded Tobermory. "It's not my carpet." The room was silent for another minute. Then Miss Resker asked Tobermory if it was difficult to learn to speak. The cat looked at Miss Resker for a minute. Then he looked out the window. It was obvious. That he considered Miss Resker's question ridiculous. What do you think of human intelligence? Asked Mavis Pennington stupidly. Human intelligence in general, or do you want to know about some particular person? Asked Tobermory. Ah,、uh, well, my intelligence. What do you think of <clears throat> of my intelligence? <laughs> Asked Mavis with a nervous laugh. Well, you put me in an embarrassing position," said Tobermory. But he did not look embarrassed. Anyway, I'll answer you. When Lady Blemley told Sir Wilfrid that she wanted to invite you to this party, he said. Mavis Pellington is the stupidest woman in the world. Why are you inviting her? Lady Blemley replied, "Sir Wilfred, I am inviting her because she is stupid. I have this old car that I want to sell, and Mavis Pellington is the only person stupid enough to buy it."、Mm. Lady Blemley, of course, said that Tobermory was a liar, but Mavis Pennington did not believe her. That morning, she had bought Lady Blemley's old car. Major Barfield tried to change the subject. He said, "Tobermory, do you want to tell us about your girlfriend, the striped cat that lives near the stable?" Everyone immediately understood that he had made a terrible mistake. It's not polite to ask people about their love affairs," replied Tobermory coldly. "Do you want me to talk about what I have seen during this party? I'm sure that you wouldn't like that, would you?" There was a moment of general panic. Almost all the guests had some private love affair. They all thought, "If Tobermory says what he has seen." I'll be in trouble. Tobermory's dinner was in two hours, but Lady Blemley said, "Tobermory, why don't you ask the cook if your dinner is ready?" "Thanks," responded Tobermory. "But I have just had tea. I don't want to die of indigestion." "Cats have nine lives, Tobermory," <laughs> said Sir Wilfrid, trying to be funny. "Possibly," was the answer. But only one liver. Lady Blemley, are you going to permit this cat to talk about us with the servants? Said Mrs. Cornet, another guest. The panic was general. Everyone remembered that Tobermory often walked outside their windows. It was obvious that he had seen and heard everything that happened in their bedrooms. Some guests became white with fear. Others, like Odo Finsbury, who was studying to be a minister of the church, ran out of the room. All the guests thought, if Tobermory tells everything he knows, there will be terrible scandals. Finally, Agnes Resker said dramatically, "Why did I come to this house party?" Tobermory had the answer.
I know why you came. Yesterday you said to Mrs. Cornett that Lady Blemley's parties were very boring, but the food was delicious. You told her that you came for the good food. In fact, you said that everyone came for the food. That is not true. You are a liar, Mrs. Cornett. Tell the truth. Did I say that? Tell the. Then Mrs. Cornett told Bertie von Tann what you said. Continued Tobermory, and he said that. Agnes Reska went anywhere she could get free food, and then. Fortunately for the guests, at that moment Tobermory stopped his story. He had seen his enemy, a big yellow tomcat. He jumped out the window and ran after it. All the guests looked at Cornelius angrily. He had caused all this trouble. Do you think Tobermory will teach other cats to talk? They asked Cornelius.、Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you think so? I don't know. It's possible, replied Cornelius. Maybe he has taught his girlfriend, the cat that lives in the stables, but I don't think he has taught any other cats, at least not yet. Lady Blemley said, "Mrs. Cornett, I know that you and your husband like Tobermory very much, but he and his friend, the stable cat, must be killed." I have not enjoyed this last half hour either," said Lady Blemley. "Yes, it is true that my husband and I like Tobermory very much. Well, we liked him before he learnt to talk and tell our secrets. Anyway, I agree that he must be killed as soon as possible. We can put poison in his food," said Sir Wilfrid, "and I will go and drown the stable cat. What about my great discovery?" Cornelius said with great emotion, "I have worked for many years. Why don't you go to the zoo?" said Mrs. Cornett, "and teach the elephants to talk. Elephants are very intelligent animals, but they do not hide under your chair and they do not sit outside your bedroom window." Cornelius tried to persuade them not to kill Tobermory and destroy all his scientific work. No one listened to him. In fact. Many of the guests thought that poison should be put in Cornelius's food. That night at dinner, all the guests were quiet. Lady Blemley tried to create conversation, but no one talked. They were all watching Tobermory's bowl. Inside the bowl was some delicious meat, and poison. But Tobermory still did not come back. After dinner, still no Tobermory. The servants came and announced that the window of the kitchen was open as usual for Tobermory. Nine o'clock, no Tobermory. Ten o'clock, no Tobermory. At eleven o'clock, one of the guests got up to go to bed. Before leaving the room, he said. Tobermory probably went to the local newspaper to tell everything he has seen and heard during this house party. Good night. It was not a good night. The next morning, all the guests asked the servants the same question, and the servants gave the guests the same answer. No, Tobermory has not returned. Breakfast was even more depressing than dinner the night before. But before it was over, the gardener walked into the room with Tobermory's dead body. His enemy, the big tomcat, killed him," explained the gardener. Tobermory was Cornelius Appin's first and only successful student. A few weeks later, Lady Blemley read in the newspaper that an elephant in the Dresden Zoological Garden had killed an Englishman. The newspaper said that the elephant was usually gentle and calm, but that the Englishman had apparently provoked it. The name of the Englishman was C. Appin. As one of Lady Blemley's guests said, "If he was trying to teach that elephant German irregular verbs, he deserved to die."